she already knows all the cues. We are just teaching her what this collar really means. And that is when you feel the collar, you come, do a recall, and wait until I say break. This is a pressure harness. So if she gets to the end of the harness, uh -uh, she'll get some pressure. It's a lot like a pressure collar. The reason why I'm using it is because this is also pressure. This is pressure to shut the pressure off, you recall. So that's what we have taught her through various tools. And we're just going to keep reinforcing it until it's fully learned. Let's see. Come. Echo. Lentil. Lentil. Over here. Follow the pressure, girl. Come on. Lentil, come. Good. Hey. Whoa. Good girl. Easy. Heel. I'm doing is getting the dogs tuned up with me. We're very disconnected. They're not paying attention that they're connected to these leashes at all. Come. Good. Good girl. So I was just waiting for that. I think so. <laughs> so everything that I was just doing from the bridge to here, that's pressure. Ah! Good. Everything we just did from the bridge to here is setting them up for the e-collar training. It's using pressure, I'm saying ah ah, and then asking them to do something and then marking it with yes. Yes means they've completed it, ah ah means that, nope, you're not doing the cue properly. Good dogs. So it's very important that they know these words when you're using pressure, especially with an e-collar. It's not okay to just slap an e-collar on, let your dog go, and expect them to know how to turn the pressure off. It's very important that your dog is pressure trained before you start using a stimulation collar and doing actual corrections. Ah, ah, sit. Good, good girl. So, this dog coming on the bridge, I'm going to get out of the way. Come here. Come here. 
This is great to record to like a meeting. Good, good. Come here. So, super important that your dog knows how to turn pressure off so that they don't not understand when you turn pressure on. Good girl. So this is exactly what I would do about meeting another dog. Their dog's off leash, mine's on leash. They're definitely allowed to all meet and hang out, but they have to wait until you say the cue. You gotta wait, good girl, good wait. Good girl, good wait. Good, good wait. Go ahead, go say hi. Go ahead, go say hi, good girl. So, so, oh icy. My so, ah, ah. It's important that your dog understands pressure. You've got verbal pressure, what I just did to her right there. You have leash pressure, and then you have e collar pressure. It's not fair to the dog to start using e collar pressure before they understand physical and verbal pressure because they don't understand what this means, and there's no, there's no guidance to show them. They're just out there feeling something with no direction. A leash gives them direction. Good girl. So, on the leash, you're walking, you teach your dog yes, and you teach your dog no, so they understand I'm doing it right or I haven't done it right. Good girl, very good, good sit. So they've been sitting here for a while, I'm gonna use some food, I'm gonna mark with yes. Yes means that the food is coming. These dogs have already been trained with that. They both already know a verbal recall and they both know how to shut the pressure off. They're already e-collar trained to come, she is already e-collar trained to come find me when it goes off. So she's gonna be helpful for her to learn. You can do something like blow a whistle to get them to recall, or you can do something like tap a vibration on the collar for a recall. They're all just communication tools, and it's not that the e-collar is making her do it, it's the way that you're applying the training and teaching them that it means something, that when the collar goes off, it's like your phone ringing, and I'm calling you to communicate. Good dogs. So I like when I hit the collar that they come over and they do something so it kind of takes them a moment so they don't do a drive-by. So her recall is to come and do a touch. Yes, what a good girl. Very nice. Good. Break. Whoops, <laughs> I threw that right on your face. So we're gonna give them a break because they've been sitting there good and we're just gonna now go for a walk. And I'm not gonna do some like formal, formal training where, you know, I do all this e-collar training on a place command or something because it's just not really how we use it here. And I've got lentil on a vibration setting and I'm going to recall her occasionally and use this in a mixture of at the same time and also by itself to make sure that she knows that this is me. Let's go, just like we've been doing previously. keep them there next to you longer you all oh, should have done touch yes that's right I'm not perfect so <laughs> don't make fun of me good girl break hand on the leash <sighs> nice I feel stalking and you know in like a realistic walk you might not use this at all but this is windy for is when it's really windy and your dog is out of earshot or they're wrestling with a dog and they're running around and they're smelling something and you're, you're calling them and you don't really want to like yell or scream their name because they're just so involved with something. It's really nice just to go like this. Yes, what a good dog! Touch, good girl, what a good girl! Yes, good girl! Good dogs! Good, very good! So Lentil came right away. No verbal recall. Very good. Break. So it's come, wait, and break. And 
I'm gonna definitely let her go until I actually need her to recall now. I'm not gonna mess with her. I'm not gonna keep calling her back because like that's not, like you're not gonna do that on a real walk. You're not gonna call your dog back. Like you're gonna actually just go for a walk. So an actual time that I really would call my dog back would be if somebody was coming and they had a dog or kids and it looks like maybe I should call my dogs over and get them out of the way. Or if you know that your dog barks at people, you should definitely call them over and be closer because the further away they are from you, the less likely they're going to respond. If you're here, you know, you're right here, you can give body pressure, you can give verbal pressure, you can, you know, manipulate the environment, you can influence your dog a little bit more when you're closer because you can't control them. I know people say control your dog, but it's a, it's a being, it's an animal. It has a mind, it has feelings, it has emotions. You cannot control them. You can influence them with the relationship you have. The more inf influential you are to a dog, the more they respect you, the more they trust you, the more they listen to you. Not the more that you love them. <laughs> Unfortunately, I love dogs. I love my dogs and I call them my kids. I'm one of those people, I'm a dog mom. But I do know that dogs really thrive off of respect and guidance and it's not like be obedient it's like I want you to run around and be a dog but there are a time and a place where you need to come and stay and let other people pass because it might look like we're out in the forest but we are on a public trail here in remote Alaska so there's lots of families there's kids there's dogs and we want to be polite I, I do care about what somebody else's experience on the trail is I don't want somebody to be like oh god I ran into that lady and her dogs that was a terrible experience I would rather have if somebody doesn't like dogs have them be more comfortable knowing that I will pull my dogs over to the side and let them pass I don't assume everybody likes dogs I don't assume everybody wants to pet my dog I definitely don't let my dogs just run up on other people it has happened but I try my best so this is a good time to do a little oh, oh she's pooping <laughs> Okay, this is a good time to recall, but just kidding. Pooping! It's not even a poop like I hear Sue. Oh, there's poop. Frozen turn. I hear Sue. It's another dog I walk. <laughs> I'm like, that's my friend! I know all their barks. See, just like this. Where's my dog? There she is. Tap, tap. Tap, tap. Smelling the poop. What a good girl! Yes! Good. Very good. So if you notice, she has to come all the way to me. Ah, 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 ah. There goes verbal pressure. Yes! Mark, for staying next to me. Good. She has to wait for the break. That's just like, I want to pet you. So it's important not to overuse your, your formal recall, whether it's Echo, Echo, come. Sniff, sniff, Echo, eh, eh. good girl, Echo, come. Very good, sit. Yes, very good, look. Good, good. Until touch, yes, break. That's formal, there's all these sequence of events. There's these expectations, there's rules. It keeps your dog focused on you, so there's a distraction going by, they're focused on you and not barking at somebody or trying to pull. So she seems very engaged with me. That means I feel like we're tuned in together. I'm gonna let her go. Break! I 
don't want her to think that you only listen when this is on. Good girl. Very good. Good girl. Three. of your walk you can you know add the cues ask them to recall check to see how tuned in they are and if they're very tuned in and you feel like you guys are communicating well then yeah freedom go do what you want I'm not gonna call you back unless I see something or I uh, you know I'm gonna leave <laughs> obviously then I'm gonna call you back and leave you up but other than that I'm not gonna call them I'm not going to abuse the recall so I often use like dried liver or really valuable treats when I am doing the e-collar recall. I think I was just sitting up there. <laughs> so that there's like an incentive to come back quickly. So once I start introducing food, then I'm very particular about the way that I give food. I don't just one and done with the high value every time because that creates a checkout. They autopilot it a little too much. Echo, what are you doing? So if you're like calling your dog and like, 90% of the time you're not doing a formal recall. It's just like come close. Okay, that's close enough. Whatever. That's pretty good And then the one time you actually need to recall your dog You have this high expectation that you never actually worked on and you suddenly now expect your dog to come all the way back to you and wait And your dog's like well, that's not what I usually do Dogs do what they usually do <laughs> Dogs are creature of habits. They repeat the same thing so it's important to practice the all the way recall, but not to abuse it. You got to find a balance of, you know, how much are you teaching and keeping it on a fun level so you're not being boring. <laughs> you don't want to bore your dog. You want to be fun for your dog. So that's like using the food as more of an incentive. So I start only using food when they recall fast. I stop giving food. You know, like earlier when Echo was sniffing around and then came over, that's not grounds for getting a high value food reward. I'm going to tell you good job. Thanks for recalling. Good dog. But I'm not going to give food. But if I call them and they turn and they come really fast, oh yeah, I'm going to make a big old stink out of it because I want them to know that coming back fast is really, really desirable. Yeah, we'll just let them play over there. 